Yeah, this was one of my worst fast sim flights. Hey guys, welcome to another video here on the AVH Pro channel. In this video, I'd like to share my story of my worst fast sim flights. Now, flying on fast sim, you know, as in the real world, I guess, is just very dynamic. You know, a lot of stuff happens and goes wrong. And some flights, you know, go particularly wrong. So this flight was in the summer of, I think, one or two years ago. And, um, you know, summer is always the season where you have to be a little bit careful with uh, weather, especially in Europe and the US, because thunderstorms are, you know, all over the place. So I was flying a flight with uh, the Boeing 737 of travel service from Kosice in Slovakia to um, Tivat in Montenegro. So Tifat is a really nice airport uh, with a very interesting approach and also a circling approach with mountains on one side and sea on the other side. And basically there's not much room for maneuvering and the wind is a bit big factor, making landings even more difficult. Now luckily I did land at Tivat before in good weather, so I kind of know what the approach was like and what you know are the factors that you have to take it to, into account when looking you know at the mountains on the other side and you know there's not a lot of room to maneuver at this airport so um, it's very interesting. So I took off from Kosice, it's a very easy airport, uh, just a long runway, not really that much happening. The weather along the way was pretty good, although there were some very big thunderstorms in the neighborhood that uh, you know I luckily didn't cross and didn't have to avoid. However, upon planning this flight, I already saw that there were a lot of thunderstorms uh, kind of off the coast of Italy, you know, heading towards Tivat. And I kind of knew that, okay, we might expect some thunderstorms in this region when we arrive here. And that's exactly what happened. Uh, pretty soon on the approach, on the descent, I already saw that there were some big thunderstorms approaching. And basically what I kind of had to do is make sure which runway I'm using. I kind of fiddled around with the FMC of the PMDG Boeing 737. And then things started to go really wrong. Basically what happened at the worst possible moment when you kind of want to rely on your LNF data, uh, the FMC failed. I got a program pin error. Now I'm not sure if this is actually a real world error or uh, whether it's something specific to the simulation of the PMDG NGX. Um, but basically the FMC failed. I also tried the other one on the first officer side, but it also failed. And uh, basically, you know, I regarded this as a full FMC, FMS failure, uh, like you would maybe also be able to encounter in real life. So what happens then? You have to rely on conventional navigation and landing at an airport like Tivat in thunderstorms, in very heavy rain, very windy conditions with conventional navigation, I thought that would not be a good idea. Um, you know, I would not have been be able to fully prepare for it. Uh, so I decided to actually divert to an, an airport um, close by so I could just land the airplane, try to fix the FMS issue, maybe reload the SIM in order to continue a safe flight to Tivat. Now that's when problems kind of started to kick in and that's where I kind of realized, you know, there's still so much more to learn about flying and, uh, you know, dealing with these kind of situations because, you know, I had to rely on conventional navigation and then if I wanted to divert to an unknown airport, in this case it was Sarajevo airport, I would have no idea how to get there. I would have had to, you know, find some kind of navigation aid in order to, you know, tune that and just fly it to that using conventional navigation. Of course, in the real world, ATC might have helped you with vectors, but in this case, I was really on my own. There was no ATC, so I had to figure a way out to reach um, uh, Sarajevo airport safely because also around this airport there's quite a bit of hilly terrain but the weather was good so I decided to actually divert there. The first problem is that you know I didn't have any charts so <laughs> of that airport so I had to look up quickly some charts of Sarajevo airport. I decided to descend to a relatively safe altitude you know at that point I also realized I don't have any charts of you know uh, covering uh, the minimum safe altitudes and in particular regions i didn't know what altitude was safe to descend to so i kind of relied on visuals and did not descend too much and then i looked up some approach plates of sarajevo decided to fly to that airport uh, stay within the 25 nautical mile radius and in order to uh, you know within that radius descend to a safe altitude because i didn't did not know what the minimum safe altitude was around you know beyond this radius because every chart states the minimum sector altitudes uh, you know, usually within, an, uh, again, in radius, in this case, 25 nautical miles usually uh, from the uh, VOR at the airport. 
and um, basically you can use that to um, make sure you descend to safe altitudes when you're approaching the airport from a particular sector. So this was really a stressful moment, you know, you know that you have the terrain, I had the weather on one side that I had to avoid, I really had to make a you know, big turn to avoid the weather, head up north to fly to Sarajevo, <laughs> descend to a particular altitude, look up the charts, um, but in the end I got there luckily. Um, I flew again to Sarajevo airport, in the surroundings and descended to a safe altitude and then I carried out the instrument approach to land at that airport. So I landed, luckily the FMC kind of, you know, rebooted and, uh, you know, revived. So I went back to TVAT later on. I waited a little bit to uh, wait for the weather to clear up a little bit. Luckily when I arrived, the weather was pretty good. I was able to land um, right away, but I still had to avoid quite a bit of thunderstorms. But uh, it was crazy guys. It was one of my most crazy flights on VATSIM. As you can imagine, this could have been a lot worse when there was also a lot of more traffic involved or when there would have been ATC around. It would have been a little bit more interesting uh, also dealing with the ATC side of things during this diversion. Uh, but I liked it, you know. You realize suddenly that there's indeed so, still so much more to learn that, um, you know, um, it's really not that easy uh, and you have to make decisions. You have to decide, okay, I'm not going to fly to this airport. I'm going to divert to an airport which is safe and before I descend any further, I'm going to, you know, fly to the airport first and get myself in a safe position so I can descend safely without hitting any terrain, you know, because that area was totally unfamiliar with me. I'm not sure what kind of, you know, mountain ranges or altitudes of terrain are around there. Of course, when I would have the Navigraph subscription, I would have been able to see that easily. Luckily, I have that right now. I can more easily see what the different uh, safe altitudes are to descend to in different areas of the world. But at that time, I didn't did not have that, so I was really relying on you know approach plates. And I figured just flying to the airport, descending there. Uh, will be the best course of action and luckily it worked out well. So I think this was my most interesting Vatsim flight in that regard. There is one more flight I just wanted to show you a screenshot of. I was flying from Prague to Frankfurt and very interesting flight. Again also weather was a big factor right here. There was a lot of thunderstorms at around Frankfurt. On flight radar the aircraft were landing flying. It was really a lot of aircraft on the approach. Um, but somehow active sky settings, uh, the active sky settings were a little bit severe and my aircraft was just shaking around on approach with severe wind shear. I had to go around, divert to Frankfurt Hahn Airport. In this case, ATC popped up and I actually went back to Frankfurt and landed. But you know, these flights with a go around and a diversion are really interesting. I think these are the only two that I've experienced. But if you've experienced any flights like these, you know, um, your worst phantom flight ever, Make sure you share that story in the comments section below. It would be really much appreciated. I'm really looking forward to reading your stories. And by the way, as you can see from this example, there are many reasons why you need to go around. So make sure you watch my latest Vetsim Go Around tutorial if you want to learn more about how to go around and how to deal with air traffic control in this situation. The link to that video should pop up somewhere and it's also down in the description. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video of me sharing my story of my worst vets and flights. I probably had more worse flights um, in my early VATSIM career, you know, and I actually have to disconnect from the network in order to not make a fool of myself. But, you know, as you can see, interesting situations can happen. So thank you for watching. Make sure to check out some of my other videos and head over to patreon.com slash aviationpro if you'd like to support the channel. There's also a link in the description. I wish you all safe flights and safe landings, and I will see you guys next time.